All right, hello everybody, welcome back. In our last video, we looked at an artillery shell that was launched straight upward, and we found that it went 5,224 meters in the air. And this time, we're gonna be looking at that same artillery shell, but we're gonna launch it at an angle. And so this is another um, case where we could solve it by kinematics, but instead we're gonna solve it through our conservation of mechanical energy equation. And so we'll start off with a diagram, and I'll do that as soon as my computer catches up with me here. And we can start with a diagram, and so it goes up, goes to a maximum height. So on my diagram, I wanna label my initial and final points. And I also wanna draw a dashed horizontal line that represents the place where the gravitational potential energy is zero or we can say H equals zero. Also wanna draw a free body diagram. It's only has the weight acting on it. And so non-conservative forces, there aren't any. Okay, so that's a free body diagram. So we don't need to draw any work diagrams for this one. So let's see, what else do we need to do? We have our equation gravitational potential energy initial plus spring potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial plus the work by non-conservative forces equals gravitational potential energy final, spring potential energy final, and this is on your, oops, final, this is on your equation sheet. All right, so all that's on your equation sheet. And now we can go about thinking about, well, we know there's not any springs here, so we can get rid of the spring terms. Last problem, I didn't even write that. Kinetic energy initial, well, it definitely has some. It was launched at that speed, but it doesn't have any gravitational potential energy at the beginning because, sorry about that. Okay. The initial state is right at our initial height. We can choose any height we want to be where this is true, where the gravitational potential energy is zero, and we chose it to be here. Always makes sense to choose the lower of the two points, initial and final. At the top, there's not gonna be any kinetic energy, and there's no work done by non-conservative forces. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Um, oh, actually I messed up. I said there's not gonna be any kinetic energy at the top, and that's incorrect, there will be. So it will still be moving. That was a mistake. Still moving at the peak because we didn't shoot it straight up. Last time we shot it straight up, but this time it's still moving at the peak. And so if we look at the initial velocity, it's going 320 meters per second at a 30 degree angle. The vertical component of this is 160 meters per second, and the horizontal component is 320 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees. And that comes out to, let's see, do I have that value handy? 277 meters per second. Okay, and so that's equal to v naught x, but that's also equal to vx. We know from our prior knowledge from kinematics that the horizontal velocity stays the same the whole time, and so that is also equal to v final because v final y is equal to zero. There's no velocity in the y direction at the final state and so that means it only has that x velocity. So we'll rewrite our equation now. We know we have kinetic energy at the beginning, and then that's equal to our gravitational potential energy at the end plus our kinetic energy at the end. And so what we're trying to find is how high it's gonna go. So we can say 1 half mvi squared equals 
MGH, and these definitions are on your equation sheet, and they were covered in a prior video. Okay. And then we can divide through by the mass, and then we can do some algebra, and we can solve for HF. Okay, and so I'm not going to go through the details of the algebra here, but the, the masses do cancel out because it's in every single term. Be careful when there's a spring term or the work term, those don't necessarily have mass in them. And so you want to be careful. You can't always, you cannot always cancel out the mass. And in this case, like I said, without going through all of the details, I will trust you to, as an exercise, check that I am correct, but I got 1,310 meters. Okay, and now we'll go on to another problem. And I guess I should say it makes sense that it doesn't go as high. It went 5,000 meters uh, when it was shot straight up. It makes sense that it's not gonna go as high if we shoot it at an angle. All right, here we've got a bullet that is shot straight up, has an initial speed of 200 meters per second, reaches a vertical height of 900 meters. What is the average force of air resistance acting on the bullet? Now we would often neglect the force of air resistance in our kinematics problems. Sometimes that was realistic and sometimes it wasn't. Here's a chance for us to analyze the amount of air resistance acting. So we can draw in the ground level, which is also gonna be where our gravitational potential energy is zero. And we'll call that our initial state and the bullet goes way up in the air. We'll call that our final state. So it's a pretty boring drawing. And we can say that VF is equal to zero, unlike the last problem where I mistakenly at first said it was zero. And the initial speed is equal to 200 meters per second. And then oh, we also know that H, we also know that HF is equal to 200 meters, and we know that HI is equal to zero. So this is our gravitational potential energy reference line. And we can draw in a free body diagram right here. We'll say that there is, oh wait, there's no upward forces acting. And I don't actually know how to erase with this particular tool, so I'm just gonna start over and say that there's weight, and there's the force of air resistance. I'm just gonna scribble that one out. All right, so our problem solving procedure, which I outlined in the last video, says that I should circle all the non-conservative forces. So I'll do that. And then I'll come down and I'll draw a work diagram for that force. The, the force is acting straight down, and then the displacement is upward. Okay, so the bullet is moving upward, but the force of air resistance is downward. And so we see that there's a 180 degree angle between those. We can then write out our energy equation. We can say PEGI plus I'm gonna skip the spring term. So you'll see sometimes I write it and sometimes I don't. And the reason here, there's just not a lot of room to be able to write it in. And I know that there aren't any springs involved in this problem. And so I encourage you to, to do the same, just to say, hey, there's no springs in this problem. So why do I need to write out those two extra terms? But I do want you to write out at least the other five terms and then thoughtfully go through and think about what's going going on in the problem. So final velocity is zero. That means we can get rid of which term? That's right, the kinetic energy. We have an initial height of zero. That means we can get rid of that term. And can we get rid of the work by non-conservative forces? Well, no, it looks like we are gonna have work by non-conservative forces here. And so now we can go ahead and proceed to, to rewrite this. And I am gonna take advantage of the full width here. So we have 
the kinetic energy, one half mv i squared plus the force of air resistance times the displacement times the cosine of theta equals m g h f. All right, and we cannot cancel out the mass here. We do know the mass, which is given right there. And so we can work on finding out what the average force of air resistance is. And so F A R equal to M G H F minus one half M V I squared. So I just subtracted this whole term from both sides. And then I can also divide by D cosine of theta. And here it looks like I've got room. So I'll go ahead and work on trying to put in the values for you. So you can see 0 0.007 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 200 meters minus one half times 0 0.007 kilograms times two. Oh, wait a minute. That was messed up. This is 900 meters there. And that makes this 900 meters. And then this is 200 meters per second squared. And then we divide that by, well, how far did it go? Well, it's uh, height, it's final height, and the distance it traveled are in fact the same number in this particular case. So 200 meters, and then the cosine of the angle between the displacement and the air resistance force, so that is 180 degrees. And that cosine of 180 is negative one. Uh, however, this term is smaller than this term. And so it works out that when we solve this, we get a positive number because we're solving for the magnitude And let's see, I don't actually have that in front of me. So let's see if I can find it really quick. I found that value at 0 0.087 newtons. All right, we're going to stop this and I'll do some more problems in the next video.